this is what my father wrote. His name is Ronald Douglas. He's writing on behalf of myself, my now deceased wife. I would like to share thoughts about the impact of the actions of Lori Vallow on our family. Tammy's death was unexpected and had a profound impact on all of us. We were barely into our recovery process when we learned of Chad's new marriage exactly two weeks after losing Tammy. We had no knowledge of missing children until we were visited by law enforcement officers and informed of Tammy's disinterment and autopsy. The drama began to unfold and the reason for the quick burial became apparent. Over the course of the following months, the ensuing revelations of deceit and intrigue caused extreme emotional stress on my wife, Phyllis. We became estranged from the Daybell children and began losing the close relationships we had with them. I'm sure they feel awkward about their father's actions and how Tammy's death was affecting us. We value them as grandchildren and want to keep them close to us. While Phyllis was already battling her leukemia of over 30 years, the emotional stress of this drama seemed to accelerate her declining health. Her remaining months of life were full of strain and heartache. Lori entered Chad's life long before we were aware of any interaction between them. In retrospect, we see that Chad was living a double life and the bonds of his family were being eroded due to his involvement with Lori. The eternal ramifications of her actions are yet to be calculated. Lori needs to pay for her actions according to the laws of mortals. She will still answer according to the laws of God when she passes from this life. Ron Douglas. This is my statement. Over the last few years, I've often thought about I would ever say to you, Lori. I've often thought about what my sister would have said too. The minute I found out that Chad had quickly remarried after the death of my most beloved sister, Tammy, it confirmed what I had always felt. You see, the minute I received the phone call that she had died, I knew something had happened to her, but I didn't know why I would feel that way. So when we were told by Chad that he had married you and that it had happened two weeks after Tammy had been buried, my heart knew. I researched you like any true woman would to find out who you were. What did I find? Lies. Everything about you that you tried to tell others is a lie. At this point, I'm going to object. I don't believe this falls within the statute or within uh, the Idaho Constitution or within Idaho versus Payne. All right, Mr. Thomas, your objection is noted. It's overruled. The court will be able to consider and ferret out these statements and properly consider what's in the record. You can continue, Thank Ms. You. William. We asked, what's her name? Lori Ryan. Well, that was a lie. That was two husbands ago. So as we, I searched, what happened to your previous husband? We, she told us that he had died from a heart attack. Lie. He died from being shot. I asked, are there children? I was told we will be empty nesters. That's a lie. The police ask us about missing children. You answer, the children aren't missing. They're safe and happy. It's a lie. Your children, your poor children were dead and buried on Chad's property. And my sister was told was sick and her health was failing. Well, that was a lie. I had seen her with my own eyes two weeks prior. She was very healthy. We have to go through her being disinterred and having an autopsy done. Was glad to get some answers and some truth after so many lies. But to find out what we knew in our hearts all along, she had been murdered by those who saw her as an obstacle to a plan. You planned her murder just as much as you planned the murders of your own children and your previous husband. Why? Why plan something so heinous? You had an affair with a married man. You lied to yourself by what is okay to sneak behind the backs of your spouses. You are not exalted beings, and your behavior makes you ineligible to be one. But why pick Chad? He was an average guy, and you had married several men before him. He made you feel special and singled out. You tell yourself that you were high spiritual beings who have lived lives together through time. You felt powerful. This is too is a lie. But Chad has no real wealth. How will you live? You can easily have divorced your spouses and made your own perverted life together, but you need money. So you tell this story about people being dark and that they are zombies. This is how you justify who needs to be removed. 
You use this lie to justify the murders of four people whose deaths you profit from. But you could sit there and think, you've never met me and I don't know you. But I've always been able to tell when I am being lied to and you are a liar, an adulteress, and a murderer. Because of the choices you made, my family lost a beloved mother, sister, aunt, and daughter. She is irreplaceable. She was 1,000 times the woman you will ever dream of being. Because of the choices you made, we have been hounded by media and those who revel in all of the salacious scandal you have stirred up. Because of you and your desire to get what you want at any cost, my family has been ripped apart. I helped raise Tammy's children. And because of you, they no longer have their mother or grandmother. And because of fear of losing another parent, they listen to the lies spewed by you and Chad. Our relationship is strained and most contact with them is gone. Your trial was the last thing my ailing mother had to live through. She declined in health as she heard through news reports all of the horrible things that happened and she had to relive all the things we have tried to forget the last four years. My mother passed away in June knowing that you will never come out of prison again. Her passing was marred by the fact that Tammy's children chose not to participate in her funeral because of fear of causing more drama. We were deprived of the chance to heal and have them realize how much we love them. We don't blame them for what happened, but we blame you and Chad for all the lies you've told and ripping apart this family. We didn't do anything. My parents are not evil. They did not deserve to lose their grandchildren on top of losing their daughter. I did not deserve to lose the relationships of children I helped raise or a sister that was my dearest friend. I am not a dark person or a zombie. And for, for me and my family to be tr- portrayed that way is unacceptable. Lucky for me, the world can see the truth as much as I can. Everyone now knows what liars you are. They now all know what horrible things you have done. You will have to live in your prison cell for the rest of your life. You are not an exalted being, and there's no huge event that is going to save you. No jail walls are going to fall so you can leave. No angels are coming to rescue you. You made judgments of others and determined that they should die based on the fact that they might do bad things and we need to kill them before they do. That is not how the atonement works. We cannot punish and judge others on things they haven't happened yet. But you did. You have also made choices that have led you here. You have been judged by the court and you have been found guilty. Your consequences are before you. I miss my sister every day. I will grieve her and know the loss of my mother for the rest of my life. I will always remember them. As for you, I choose to forget you. And as I leave this courtroom today, I choose to never think of you again.